about to show you guys how to connect your MacBook to your Android device so they work seamless. No, but for real, they actually do be working well together. Check this out. How many of you are on the verge of switching your iPhone for an Android? Like seriously, talk to me. I know you love your MacBook, but you're horrified that it'll destroy your workflow, right? Well, check this out. As a MacBook user and an Android user, when I'm not reviewing the G14, cause I'm doing my six month review with it, but this has been my setup for about three years now. A setup that is easy to replicate and I've made it work so I can easily enjoy both devices simultaneously. And it all starts with this, local send. Think about Local Sand as your new AirDrop alternative. Local Sand is an app available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, and iOS, which basically allows you to send files within the same network. And this is basically how you replace AirDrop for the most part. And I say for the most part because if you do not have a network connection, like say on a plane, you cannot transfer anything. However, the cool thing is that if you're not connected to a Wi-Fi network, you can hotspot your MacBook with your Android phone and still share files since both devices are theoretically connected to the same network. Transferring files really doesn't take long, like 10 gigabytes for example, which is a lot of data transfers within five minutes or so. Yeah, like check this out, okay? I'm about to transfer 14 gigabytes into the phone. 13, 13.2 13 gigabytes. And I'll accept right here. That can take up to five minutes, okay? This is a heavy file. Let's see if it really takes five minutes. Transferring almost 14 gigs ended up taking about eight minutes. I noticed it's a lot more reliable than AirDrop in my opinion, and you can literally receive or send files, folders, texts, transfer, copy and paste text, but there's a better app for that. Basically, this here is a universal clipboard. KDE Connect makes using a universal clipboard much simpler than Local Send. The app is also available on a bunch of platforms, and like Local Send, it is open source. Now, it is very ugly when it comes to the UI, but don't let that intimidate you. When you first download it and install it, it will live within your menu bar. You can open it up there and use the left tab to connect your Android device make sure KDE Connect is downloaded from the Play Store. When you connect this, it will offer you a bunch of plugins. I heavily suggest that you only use the clipboard only. It's got a bunch of other cool plugins you can try, but if you want to keep things simple, this is what I suggest. As soon as you request pairing, you'll get a notification on your phone. And from here, guys, it's just as easy as copying something from your Mac and pasting it with the help of your keyboard on your phone. Like, that's it. And the same goes the other way around. It works like really well with zero delays. Look, I really suggest you guys try it out. Uh, like for example, if you lose your phone, you can actually like find your device. It, it works really, really well. Let me show you guys quickly. Look at that, it's pretty cool. Um, it's a useful feature, that's for sure. So it's definitely worth giving it a try. Now I've noticed that most of you guys watching the channel are not subscribed to the channel. So please consider subscribing, liking this video, and I guess stay tuned because we have a lot more cool stuff coming up. Also, the really cool part about this setup is that you can explore lots of different earbuds and headphones. AirPods can work well with some Android phones, but you'll definitely miss out on a lot of the features. The trick with earbuds or headphones is finding a pair that can seamlessly connect to multiple devices at the same time, whether it's iOS, macOS, Windows, or Android. These, for example, the NWM1s are really special open-ear headphones. They support multi-point Bluetooth. So in Croatia, I had them hooked up to my G14 and my Reno 14 at the same time without any issues. If you're watching something on one device and you get a call on the other, it'll just ring through, no need to switch manually. They've also got an app, NWM Connect for both iOS and Android. But what's cool is how they sound. It's like having two super clean speakers floating around your ears. They're ultra light and super comfy, and it's crazy how full and immersive the sound still feels. Just to be clear, this isn't bone conduction or anything weird like that. It's natural open air sound, no vibrations, just really nice audio to be honest. There's this tech they call PSZ, 
personalized sound zone and it's kind of wild. It creates this little sound bubble around your ears by inverting sound waves. So even if you're sitting close to someone, they won't hear what you're listening to. I also tried this at an airport and it works like really well because it's open ear, you're not cut off from your surroundings. So if there's a flight announcement, you'll still catch it even if you've got your volume cranked. <laughs> the sound itself is sharp, clear and still bassy, really balanced for something that's not sealing into your ear. Calls are also super clear. Trust me, I use them a lot for that. They've got this thing called Magic Focus Voice where the mics isolate your voice and filter out background noise. So even in busy spots, the other person hears you clearly. Battery life is crazy too. They say 20 hours on a charge, but uh, I started using them last Sunday and it's Thursday now and they're still at 23%. They don't fold, but uh, they're flexible. Reinforced plastic, uh, really solid build to be honest. The speaker grill is precision crafted from stainless steel and the audio system is actually coaxially aligned with dual drivers and amps. So you get detailed sound without any ear pressure or heat buildup. Look, they're made by a company called NTT Sonority out of Japan with over 70 years of audio research behind them and it really shows if you're the kind of person who really likes staying aware, whether you are in the city, in an office, watching your kids or just not into that sealed off feeling, these are totally worth it. It's like your own personal soundtrack while still being connected to the world. Just unmute it and you go. Now that your universal clipboard is ready, you can also text from your MacBook. Yes, sir. You can either do it on the browser or you can download an app on the App Store called Texty. It's very easy to use. Open it up, scan the QR code by using the device pairing feature within the Google Messages app, and it should load all your conversations from your phone onto your MacBook. And you can actually do this on multiple MacBook devices at the same time. It's been working fine for me. I haven't ran into any weird issues up to now. Texts sync really seamlessly between both my phone and computer, no matter where I'm texting from. I can text with RCS or SMS and I'm not going through any bugs. I can even download files from my conversations onto my computer and it works really well. I'm really happy with it. As for FaceTime, I think this is a far stretch, but you can use Google Duo or Google Meet. It's actually pretty simple to use, but the problem is that it requires the person on the other end to have Google Meets installed and a Gmail account already logged in. But the integration with an iPhone is actually really seamless. Like if you make a call from your Android device, anyone with an iPhone and an account set up will get it right away. And the person on the other end can always send you a link to the Meet and with Texty, you can open it up within your computer. But I think this is a far stretch and honestly, it's the best FaceTime ecosystem replacement I've been able to find. It is doable, but it's not as seamless. Also, I realized that I said that I've been rocking this setup for the past three years, but that's not entirely true. What I mean about that is that I've been rocking a MacBook and an Android device for the past three years. But up until now, I think I've been able to perfect this entire sort of ecosystem. But you know what? You know what makes email really seamless for me is cross-platform support. Look, I use an app called Superhuman. It is a paid subscription, not cheap, but I've been using it for over two years across all my devices. It's installed on both my MacBook and my Android phone, but I love it because of how well it works across platforms. It sorts emails efficiently, filters out spam from your main inbox, and lets you create snippets to save time on repetitive replies. There's even a full keyboard shortcut system that helps you fly through your inbox. I use the shortcuts literally all the time. Plus the UI is clean, fast, and easy to navigate. It's around $25 a month and currently supports only Gmail and Outlook, but you can connect multiple accounts under the same subscription and organize them with split views. I really, really like this app and it just makes my MacBook and Android integration so much better. Then Google Chrome really helps me keep my browsing in one place. And for the most part, all my accounts connected together. The fact that I use Gmail as a service provider makes integration a lot smoother, mainly because the best ecosystem you can stick to after Apple is Google. With Chrome, I can easily have access to my internet tabs from my S25 Ultra on my MacBook and vice versa. Google Payments, if I save credit cards into it, those same cards will pop when I check out at stores within my MacBooks. Passwords, 
every time I log into platforms, I got my passwords all within a single platform. And those passwords are shared with one Gmail account across my devices. Once you mix this workflow with KDE Connect as your universal clipboard, it really makes the integration feel incredibly smooth. And then, and then there's Google Photos. I heavily suggest you invest some time into Google Photos, even if you use iCloud Photos, no matter what platform you're using, with Google Photos, everything is in sync. I've used, I don't know how many phones for the past like five, six months, and every time I take pictures with those phones, it literally goes into my Google Photos albums, and I have everything in one place. That's just so, so good. And then Google Photos. I heavily suggest you start using Google Photos as a whole. You can in fact import your iCloud library into Google Photos just to make sure you have everything backed up in one single spot. If you go within their domain, there will be a download button at the end of the URL search bar. You can download the Google Photos app right there. Feel free to drag this into your dock and open it up when you need it. But every single photo, video, screenshot that you take with your Android device will sync into the cloud and will appear right there, ready for you to interact with it. You can even download a video you took with your phone and use Texty to send it to a friend all with your MacBook. As long as you set up Google Photos within your Android phone and you make sure you sync your photos library to the app, all of this will work. And you can also share Google Photos with your partner so you're not constantly airdropping pics back and forth every time one of you takes a good shot. The last thing I suggest is to use Google Keep. Google Keep is not as good as Notes, but it is cross-platform and it's actually how I used to copy paste things between my devices. Google Keep keeps all your notes in sync and available to you within your MacBook and within your Android device. The only thing I'm not a fan of is that there is no rich formatting. It's limited folder nesting options kind of suck and it can feel too basic for long form writing. But other than that, it works really well. So if you're on the fence about switching to Android because you're worried about losing key features with your MacBook, there are plenty of ways to recover and even replace most of those features with solid alternatives that work just as well, although they are not uh, as seamless. At the end of the day, the Apple ecosystem really does work seamlessly and it's there for a reason, but uh, it shouldn't stop you from trying out Android devices.